In December 2022, the United States delivered what many called a death sentence to a small Chinese chipmaker. Cambricon was blacklisted. Most experts predicted the company would collapse within months. But instead of folding, Cambricon did the unthinkable. By 2025, it reported 2.88 billion yuan in revenue and 1.38 billion yuan in profit in just six months. How did a company on the brink of extinction turn sanctions into its greatest weapon? To understand Cambricon's rise, we need to go back to its roots. Chen Tianxi and Chen Yunji weren't your average entrepreneurs. They were prodigies at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, where they developed groundbreaking AI chips known as the Dianao series. These weren't just academic experiments. They were real processors that could run neural networks faster and more efficiently than many existing options. At the time, most of China's AI systems depended on chips from companies like NVIDIA and Intel. This reliance created a huge vulnerability. If foreign suppliers cut off access, China's tech industry could grind to a halt. The brothers believed their country needed its own powerful chips that could directly compete with NVIDIA and Intel. So, they left academia to start their own company. They named it Cambricon, inspired by the Cambrian period, symbolizing an explosion of new life. Their mission? To spark a similar explosion in AI chip innovation and make China more secure and independent in the digital age. Cambricon's first big break came from an unlikely partner, Huawei. At the time, Huawei was expanding into smartphones and needed processors to power AI features like smarter cameras, real-time translation, and voice recognition. General purpose processors weren't cutting it. Cambricon's design, however, was different, efficient, powerful, and built specifically for neural networks. On paper, the partnership seemed impossible. Huawei was a global leader with strict standards, while Cambricon was a young startup with no commercial track record. But when Huawei tested the chip, it delivered. In 2017, Cambricon's processor was integrated into Huawei's flagship Kirin 970 as the neural processing unit. This wasn't a small trial. It shipped in millions of devices worldwide. The impact was immediate. Huawei's phones gained advanced AI features, while Cambricon proved its chips could perform at scale. Investors noticed. Cloud providers started asking questions. Overnight, Cambricon went from an academic spin-off to a billion-dollar chip maker, the perfect storm. By 2018, three powerful forces were aligning in Cambricon's favor. This momentum didn't come easily. Every deal was a struggle to prove themselves against global giants, but it paid off. First, China's Made in China 2025 plan made semiconductors a top national priority. Leaders saw reliance on foreign chips as a strategic risk one that could cripple the country if export controls were tightened. Second, the demand for AI hardware was exploding. General purpose CPUs couldn't handle the heavy lifting of AI tasks, but specialized accelerators like Cambricon's chips could. And third, U.S.-China trade tensions were heating up, making the push for domestic technology even more urgent. Cambricon was perfectly positioned. Its processors were tailor-made for AI workloads, and its mission aligned with China's push for tech independence. State-linked funds and major investors poured in capital, giving the company the resources it needed to scale. Universities began adopting Cambricon chips for research, and state-owned firms started testing them in real-world applications. Momentum carried Cambricon to its IPO in July 2020 on Shanghai's star market. The company raised nearly $370 million, and its stock surged on the first day of trading, even though it was still losing money. Investors saw it as a cornerstone of China's AI future. But success didn't last long. In 2019, Huawei, Cambricon's biggest customer, began shifting away from its processors. Instead, Huawei decided to develop its own in-house designs under its high silicon division. Orders from Huawei dropped sharply, cutting deep into Cambricon's revenue and credibility. The company had built its name on Huawei's flagship phones, and losing that partnership was a devastating blow. Then came the real shock. In December 2022, the United States placed Cambricon on its 
entity list. The move cut the company off from the advanced design software and manufacturing partners that every chip maker relies on. Without tools from Synopsys and Cadence, and without access to TSMC's cutting-edge factories, Cambricon was forced to rely on less advanced domestic manufacturing. Analysts were quick to write obituaries for the company. Some predicted permanent decline, while others believed the pressure might accelerate China's domestic chip development. Inside Cambricon, the crisis forced a reckoning. The company had to reinvent itself and fast. Reinvention through ecosystem. Cambricon's pivot wasn't just about survival. It was about building a moat that couldn't be sanctioned away. The company looked to NVIDIA for inspiration. NVIDIA's dominance in AI chips didn't come solely from its powerful GPUs. It came from CUDA, their software platform. Think of it like a specialized operating system for AI. Developers write their code for CUDA, and it runs seamlessly on NVIDIA's chips. Once a company builds their entire system on CUDA, switching to a different brand is incredibly expensive and difficult locking them into NVIDIA's ecosystem. That's the real competitive advantage. Cambricon decided to create its own version of that moat for China. It invested heavily in developer tools, documentation, and education, making it easier for local companies to adopt its hardware. Partnerships with major players like Inspur, Alibaba Cloud, and Tencent Cloud integrated Cambricon chips into AI servers and cloud platforms. Domestic AI models from companies like DeepSeek and Tencent began optimizing for Cambricon architecture. This wasn't just a technical pivot. It was a strategic shield. Even if competitors built faster chips, Chinese developers and companies would face high switching costs that kept them loyal to Cambricon. The company positioned itself as the android of AI chips in China. Not just hardware, but a full platform. Record growth. The results came faster than anyone expected. In the first half of 2025, Cambricon reported 2.88 billion yuan in revenue and 1.38 billion in profit, a year-over-year -year growth rate of more than 4,000%. The turnaround was driven by cloud AI chips and inference workloads, with new clients like ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, relying on Cambricon processors for critical infrastructure. Patents and partnerships strengthened its moat while while domestic manufacturing improved enough to support profitable scale. Cambricone had gone from losing its biggest customer and facing sanctions to becoming one of China's most important semiconductor firms. The bigger question? Cambricon's rise is proof that sanctions don't always destroy. Sometimes they accelerate. What began as a small academic spin-off is now a key player in China's technology independence. But the bigger question remains, can Cambricon's model scale beyond China's borders? Will it ever rival NVIDIA on the global stage? Or will it remain a domestic champion shaped by politics and necessity? One thing is certain, what was meant to be the end of Cambricon became the beginning of its most powerful weapon.